गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स फॉर द कॉमर्स सेक्शन नाउ दिस इज द फर्स्ट वीडियो आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो फॉर स्टैंडर्ड इलेवन कॉमर्स सब्जेक्ट इज इकोनॉमिक्स एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इकोनॉमी एंड इकोनॉमिक्स नाउ लेट स्टार्ट सो इकोनॉमिक्स दिस सब्जेक्ट इज वेरी क्लियर वेरी पॉपुलर अमॉन्ग यू यू हैव स्टडीड दिस सब्जेक्ट इन स्टैंडर्ड टेन ऑल्सो नाइन एंड टेन बोथ बट इन स्टैंडर्ड इलेवन we will define this subject we will analyze this subject in much more detailed way now this economics you are very well aware of is the study of money it is the study of values so on different angles the various economists have given various definitions now the earliest definition that was given it was given by the famous economist whose name was adam smith he is also known as the father of economics there are other economists also such as robins such as marshall but it was seen in the course of studies that various economists have their own theories on economics various economists they criticized each other on the basis of those theories the modern theory of the modern economist whose name was paul a samuelson has given a perfect definition of economics till date his definition is believed to be one of the perfect definition now what he has said that economics is study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ the scarce and productive resources which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time so it is a very perfect definition that he has given with or without money in the course of study in standard 9 we have studied about the factors of production so why he has used the term with or without money here he has said that in order to produce passive factor in the course of production the passive factors does not have any direct influence to production now as capital is a passive factor capital has a role to play but it is not the one and the sole factor that carries out production as because money itself cannot alone cannot carry out any production that is why he has used the term very perfectly now in the course of the studies we come across the term in this chapter the book name is introduction to microeconomics here we find this term microeconomics a new term microeconomics and macroeconomics micro and macro now what is the meaning of micro micro means actually small nano small the easiest term if i will use it is small and macro means big large now microeconomics and macroeconomics these are the different branches of study 
both are the study of economics but their branches are different their field is different there is a difference in field now what is actually microeconomics and what actually macroeconomics is we will see now microeconomics focus over here microeconomics is actually the study of the economic condition of an individual a firm or the resource owners individual firm or resource owners now a financial condition of an individual a society and of our organization all these things when we analyze we find that this microeconomics is the study of the behavior of human being that what a human being decides what the human being reacts in an economy and in the case of macroeconomics the macro the term is big now we will take it in a broader sense in macroeconomics we will not study only the factor of an individual it is not limited or restricted to the factor of individual but here we will study on the bigger issues bigger issues such as the national issues the social issues the national issues such as un the unemployment problems such as the growth the gdp growth the gnp growth investment etc so all these factor here we will see the study of overall economic phenomenon such as employment generation gross national gnp the full form of gnp is gross national product savings investment consumption economic growth etc microeconomics in other term is also known as the theory of price or price theory you can tell anything microeconomics i repeat it is termed as the price theory or theory of price macroeconomics is termed as the income and employment theory so in a large scale now when we take talk about the price theory we directly deal we directly deal with an individual's behavior or reaction on a on the market mechanism that what an individual reacts on a market the major concern of an individual who is an individual i you we are we are individuals what are our reactions depending on the market prices now for example let's take a small example when the price of vegetables if the price of the vegetables rise suppose even 2 rupees or 5 rupees also we human beings we individuals we do a very harsh reaction if it will be 5 rupees higher we will react we will become very angry when it will be 5 rupees cheaper we will become very happy when price of petrol rises for even 1 rupee also we become very angry we become very upset and when the same price falls 5 rupees we become very happy why because it is a price theory we all are individuals we we behave we react on the price. so that is why it is a study of microeconomics on small factor price so we individuals are generally concerned about the prices now if someone tells me if you if you go and talk to a beggar who is begging on street america is a very rich country its gdp is very high the gdp of america is very high canada america uk all these are the rich countries now if you go to america and talk to a beggar that america's gdp is very high the beggar will give you a tight slap that what he has to do with the gdp of the country he is sitting he is starving for food so but it is true that the gdp of usa is very high but still people some a section of people is begging on the streets that clearly indicates 
that macroeconomics is not the study of the individual as a whole. It is the study of country. The country is developing. Investment is coming. Foreign investment is coming to a country. The co country is earning revenue. Government is earning revenue. But what the individuals are getting? We don't know. We don't know that we are not getting the direct, indirect impact. Maybe we all are getting, but direct impact we are not getting anything. That is why we cannot understand our benefit in the case of microeconomics, in the case of macroeconomics. So this is the thing. Now here is a small chart that I have made. The economics, it is divided into two factors, micro and macro. Today we will only study in this part, first part we will only study the micro and macro. So just remember it very simply, micro means the small factors, macro means the big factors. This is the main difference that you have to keep in mind. Now in microeconomics, economics, micro and macro. Under microeconomics, what are the factors that are coming? Product pricing. Product pricing, number one. Fact factor pricing. Number three. Welfare of economies. First is the product pricing. Now as I have already said you, that in under microeconomics, as it is the price theory, so the pricing of a product is very essential for an economy. Now the government has to make certain regulations and control on the prices of the commodities because the, it will be consumed because it will be consumed by the individuals. They have to pay the price. That is why this product pricing also further extends this to the theory of demand and theory of supply. Theory of demand and theory of supply. I will come to this part little later. First we will understand the product pricing. That is the price of the product should be regulated, decided. It should be balanced. Second, factor pricing. Factor pricing means what are the factors that determines the price? What factors are determining the price of a commodity that we have to keep in mind? For example, that let's take a, let's take example of a commodity such as a bottle of cold drinks. Let's take an example of bottle of cold drinks. A one liter cold drinks costs across fifty rupees. Now, how this cost is determined? That the cost of that one liter cold drinks will be fifty rupees. So it is determined by lot of factors and welfare and the welfare theory. It should also be kept in mind that the price as well as the, the factor that is the availability should not be a burden to the quality or the quantity of the product. It should not hit the compromise with the quality and quantity of the product. So this we have to keep in mind. So this was the first part of my video. I will come with the second part very soon. Till then, stay home and stay safe. Thank you.